Hey SOSS, it's your old pal and friend and Vice Principal Mr. Heinrichs here and today we're going to talk health and safety. Of course it's important for all of us to know how we're going to operate this year so I'm going to go through some procedures so please pay attention because it is going to dictate how we are going to operate this year. Um, I know it's going to be a different year and there's going to be some changes and some challenges but that doesn't mean we can't have a great year. So if we all cooperate together and do what we need to do, I am confident that this can be one of the best years we have ever had. You are living in historic times. There hasn't been a global pandemic for like a hundred years. So this will be a time in history that you talk to your grandchildren about. But we need to weather the storm, so we need some information about health and safety, which I'm going to give you now. So the main purpose of this video today is to cover the health and safety protocols that we are going to have in place in the school for the coming year. But before we get into the health and safety protocols here, we want to acknowledge that all of you are coming from a different space when it comes to the COVID-19 global pandemic. Some of you have had to work 40 hours a week at your jobs. So you have been very, very busy. Others of you might have people at home who are immunocompromised. Maybe you have grandparents that live at home and you've been really concerned about whether they might get sick. Perhaps you have some kind of uh, immunocompromised system and you yourself are afraid of getting sick. Maybe you have questions about how this year is going to go and whether you're going to be successful. Some of you are probably concerned about the fact that you only had eight weeks of school before the pandemic struck and you really feel like you're not ready for the next grade level. We want, to, we want you to know that we acknowledge all of those concerns and they matter to us. So we want to help alleviate your fears and answer your questions, put health and safety protocols in place that will make you feel safe and the staff feel safe so that we can have an excellent year. Make no mistake, just because the year is going to be different does not mean that it can't be a great year. In fact, I think we might have one of our best, 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 best years ever, but we will need your cooperation. But before we get into the health and safety orientation, we know that some of you have concerns, some of you have questions, some of you might be anxious about coming back to school, some of you might be fearful about coming back to school. So I want you to know that we have an avenue for you to ask your questions. So if you go to the SOSS homepage, which I will show you now, there will be a link for each grade to post questions. Now your questions won't appear as a sticky note until the moderator, which will be me, has approved your question. And what we will try to do by the end of the day is answer those questions. So when you get a chance, take out your phone, go to the SOSS website and ask any question that you have that is a concern for you that you need answered to make yourself feel comfortable. The first thing that you need to know with regard to health and safety and the way that our year is going to proceed is that all of you are in a learning group. At SOSS, the way we've divided our learning groups is that each grade is its own learning group. 
So grade eights, you're in a learning group. Grade nines, grade tens, grade elevens, grade twelves, all in your own learning group. Keep in mind that teachers are not in any of your learning groups. Now, what does that mean for you? When you're with people in your learning group, you should still try to physically distance to stay six feet apart, but you don't have to. And any time that you interact with people outside of your learning group, you should be wearing your mask. That includes talking with your teacher. Keep in mind your teacher is not in your learning group. So when the teacher is teaching at the front of the class and they are six feet away from the students, they don't need to wear a mask. But when a teacher gets close to you, they're gonna put on their mask. And likewise, as a courtesy to your teacher, we would appreciate if you put on your mask when your teacher comes close to you as well. So again, in your learning group, you don't have to have a mask and you don't have to maintain six feet of distance, but of course, it's wise to do so whenever you can. Because students are in a learning group, it means that anytime there's an opportunity to interact with another learning group, everybody needs to be wearing a mask. So every time you leave your class to move to another space, you need to put on your mask. Okay, so every time you're in the hallway, you should have a mask on. There's only two times in the school where you don't wear your mask. One of them is inside a classroom with your learning group. And the other time is when you get to the designated space in the school for your learning group. I will show you what those designated spaces are. And the purpose for those spaces is so that you can eat lunch. Of course, you can't eat lunch with a mask on. So in your designated lunch space, you can take off your mask and you can eat and you can visit with other people in your learning group. Grade eight, you're going to be in the small gym. Grade nines, you are going to be at the north end of the big gym. Grade tens, you will be at the south end of the big gym. Grade elevens, you will be in the atrium and grade twelves, you will be in the library. Now keep in mind, you only need to be in the learning group when you're in the school. Once you're outside the school and you're in an open space and you can stay away from six, six feet from everybody else, please feel free to take off your mask. You can do that. Grade eight, you are in the small gym for lunch and your washrooms are the ones located off of the small gym right behind me. Grade nines, you will be at the north end of the big gym and your washrooms will be the change room washrooms. Grade 10s, you will be in the south end of the big gym and your washrooms will be the downstairs washrooms because that's where your lockers are. Grade 11s, your space will be the atrium and your washroom will be the upstairs washroom. Grade 12s, your space is going to be the library. Now, we put you in the library because we know that you can be responsible. Seriously? So yes, you are going to be allowed to eat your lunch in the library, but please be mindful that usually we don't allow food and drinks in here, so be as careful as you can with your lunch. Um, also, your designated washroom is the one that's on the main floor right across from Ms. Shorey's room. That will be your designated washroom. What we'd like to do is limit the number of people who are in a washroom. So the way we're going to determine this is however many urinals or stalls are in a washroom that's how many people can be in here so in this main floor boys washroom two urinals one stall maximum three people if there are more than three people wait outside till somebody comes out let's talk a little more about what it means to be part of a learning group it means that when you come to school that you need to go to your designated space. So grade eights, nines, tens, and elevens, twelves, you have your own designated space. So if you wanna hang out with people in your learning group, please go to those spaces. Keep in mind that the school will not be open before eight o'clock in the morning. And while you are waiting to enter the school, we respectfully ask that you would keep six feet from other people unless they're in your learning group. As I told you before, anytime you leave a classroom, you need to put your mask on. 
So this is going to become just a normal part of equipment that we will have to put on our mask every time we leave a classroom or any time we are in a common space. All right, so let's just get used to doing it. Now, as you know, there's lots of creative masks out there. You can order designer masks online. The only thing we ask is that with your masks, they still need to fall within the standards of our dress code, which is no advertising of alcohol and no advertising or symbols related to drugs. So please make sure you keep that in mind. Now, there may be classes where there are more than one learning groups. Typically those happen at the grade 11 and 12 level. So let's say there's a law 12 class that has both grade 11s and grade 12s in the class. What we will ask you to do is to have the grade 11s on one side of the room and the grade 12s on the other side of the room, maintaining six feet difference between the two learning group difference maintaining six feet of distance between the two learning groups. And if you do that, both groups don't need to wear a mask. Keep in mind, your teacher is not part of your learning group. So anytime your teacher comes within six feet, he or she will wear a mask. And we respectfully ask you to also wear a mask for your safety and for their safety. I'm standing outside of the school where students typically line up to take the bus. <laughs> In the past, we have had students crowd as they're waiting for the bus because they want to get a good seat. This year, however, there's going to be a seating plan on the bus. So you already have an assigned seat, so there's no reason for you to crowd. Just as in every other area of the school, we're going to ask you to wear a mask when you're in the bus lineup and as much as possible be two meters away from people who are outside of your learning group and you need to keep the mask on when you ride the bus. If you ride a bus, you will find that there is a seating plan on your bus and you need to sit in your assigned seat. As well, whenever you're on the bus, you need to put your face mask on. Okay, one more thing that you need to know about is that because buses now have a seating plan and because you have to be registered in order to ride the bus, those of you who have been just hitching a ride on the bus to go to your friend's place cannot do that this year. So once again, if you are not a registered bus rider in School District 53, you will no longer be allowed to take the bus. As you know, the coronavirus is spread through droplets. So when we cough, when we sneeze, even when we breathe and when we speak, we are emitting droplets. And if other people inhale those droplets, they could become infected. And so we have a few measures that we can put in place to mitigate the chances of us contracting the coronavirus. So the first thing is physical distancing. In the hallways and on the floor, we have white pieces of tape. And those white pieces of tape are exactly two meters apart. So that's to help you with your social distancing. Okay, now let's talk about something that is of the utmost importance for students and staff. And that is if you are displaying any symptoms of any illness, you need to stay home. If you have a cough, if you have a fever, if you have a runny nose, you should stay home. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to get tested for COVID, although that's an option, but you shouldn't return to school until you have no more symptoms. Okay, here's the next possibility. Let's say someone in your household has symptoms. They have a cough or a fever or a runny nose. As long as you don't have any symptoms, you are still free to come to school. I hope that's clear. As long as you don't have symptoms, you can come to school. And that includes staff and students. I am currently in the school sick room. The reason I'm in the school sick room is that there is a third possibility, which is that perhaps you develop symptoms while you're at school. If that happens, you will be removed from your class and you will immediately be asked to put on a mask and you will come here to the school sick room 
and we will contact your parents to pick you up. In addition, we will clean any of the spots that you have been in the school and you should stay home until your symptoms subside. There's another scenario we need to cover and that is if you come in close contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Now, the only way that you are going to know if you are in close contact with someone who has tested positive is if Interior Health tells you that you have been a close contact. So you don't get to decide that. And that when I say you, I mean staff or student. You don't get to decide if you're a close contact. Interior Health will tell you that you're a close contact of someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. If that happens, you will be asked to self-isolate for 14 days. There's one more scenario that we need to cover, and that is what if someone tests positive for COVID-19 who goes to the school, whether it's a staff member or a student? What will happen at that point is that Interior Health will do an assessment and they will decide what happens next. They may decide that the entire learning group stays home for 14 days. They may decide that just a few individuals who are in close contact with that person self-isolate for a few days. Or they may determine that the risk is so low that everybody continues to come back to school except for the person with COVID-19. So there is no set rule that says if someone tests positive at our school that everybody or a group of people go home or individuals go home. Interior Health will make that assessment. There's one more situation I want to talk to you about and that is that some of you may exhibit symptoms but you know exactly why you're exhibiting symptoms. For example, perhaps you have allergies and your allergies act up so you have a runny nose and perhaps you're sneezing. Perhaps you have asthma and you have a shortness of breath. So as long as the symptoms are presenting as normal for you, you can continue to come to school. As long as you know exactly why those symptoms are there, you can still come to school. However, if your symptoms change, that is they're not normal for you, then you should stay home just like everybody else. But if you do have symptoms by some pre-existing condition, please let us know. Sometimes when it's not practical to stay six feet apart, and it's also impractical to wear a mask, you may find yourself talking to other people through plexiglass like we have here in the library. Even if you do stay six feet apart and you wear a mask all the time, there is still no substitute for washing your hands. Wash your hands, do 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 do, wash your hands, do 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 do, wash your hands, do 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 do, wash your hands. And if you're not near a washroom, use hand sanitizer on your hands. <laughs> And if you need to cough or you need to sneeze, make sure you do it into your elbow. <coughs> okay, here's what we've covered so far. All of you are in learning groups and your learning group are all the other students in your grade. So when you're in a classroom and it's only your grade, you do not have to wear a mask and you don't have to social distance, but you still should whenever you can. Keep in mind that your teacher is not part of your learning group, so whenever your teacher speaks or you can come close to your teacher, you will need to have a mask on. Also, remember that there are designated spaces in the school for all the learning groups and there are also designated bathrooms at lunch for all of the learning groups. When you're with your learning group, you don't need a mask and you don't need to physical distance. However, anytime you're in the hallway or you come into the school in general, you should be wearing your mask. It's going to become normal, so let's just get used to it. Everybody will be wearing a mask. We'll be talking to each other through masks. Keep in mind that the best thing is physical distancing, the next best thing is to have a mask on, and the next thing is to have a barrier between you and the other person.
There are floor markings which dictate the flow of traffic in the hallways. Please be sure you stay on the correct side of the hallway or the stairwell and move in the same direction as the arrows. In addition, there are white markings on the floor that are two meters apart. That should help you with your physical distancing. Keep in mind that there is no substitute for keeping your hands clean. So whenever you can, wash your hands for 20 seconds. And if you don't have a chance to wash your hands, use hand sanitizers. And there are plenty of stations throughout the school where you can sanitize your hands. In addition, if you have a cough or a sneeze, do it into your elbow to keep it from spreading into the air. I'm here in the custodial room because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about cleaning. The uh, provincial health guidelines say that our school will be cleaned twice a day. One cleaning will happen during the day and for our school that will happen at lunch and the other cleaning will happen after the end of the day and that will be a deep clean. So one of the reasons that we went to our day one, day two schedule is so that we will only have two classes a day, which means that when you come in the morning, you will arrive to a clean class. And at lunch, all the classrooms will be cleaned, which means when you go to your afternoon class, that will also be a clean classroom. We're doing this for health and safety reasons because we can't expect the custodians to clean more than twice a day. So this way, everybody, students and staff, will have a clean classroom every time they go into a class. Because we're switching to a two class a day schedule, it means those classes are really, really long. They're going to be a little over two and a half hours. So you are going to need to work with your teacher to organize some breaks in there. And it might be a really good idea to take the class outside during those breaks so that you get a chance to get some fresh air and you won't be clogging our hallways when you do that. And because the classes are really long, it means that people can take breaks at different times and that should help us out too with the crowding in the common areas. Okay guys, I am in the counseling center. And the reason I'm in the counseling center is that I need to tell you something that's not specifically health and safety, but it is related. So you know, of course, that we have learning groups, which means we needed to change some of our electives, the electives that are typically grade nine and 10, and electives that are grade 11 and 12, and we had to split those electives. As a result, a lot of you are not getting the electives that you had hoped to get. Now, I know what happens is that when people don't get the courses that they want, they come into the counseling center and they flood this area and they wait for the counselors to meet with them. Of course, we can't have that in our current situation. So there is a counseling forum online and our counselors are going to work through the appointments that are made through the online system. So if you sit here in the counseling center, they are not going to tend to you. They are going to prioritize the people who made appointments online. So even though you're in an elective that you don't wanna be in, go to your elective because the counselors will come find you and they will meet with you. However, you need to know that some of the electives that you want are no longer available to you. And that's just the way it is in the age of COVID. Hey guys, uh, I thought it would be important to mention to you what happens when you are in a class that is outside of your learning group. For example, you might be a grade 11 student who is retaking your math or your science class. When you are in a class outside of your learning group, you need to stay two meters away from the rest of the class. They don't need to stay two meters away from each other, but you need to stay two meters away from them as a group if you're not wearing your mask. If you need to interact with anybody in the class, you need to wear your mask. They don't need to wear a mask. And that's also true if there's a group of two or three or four of you in a learning group and you are in a classroom with a different learning group. You as a group can stay together, but you need to stay two meters away from the rest of the class. Usually at school, we promote generosity and we promote sharing. However, 
In the current COVID-19 era, we're going to ask you not to share personal items. Personal items like pencils and pens. Um, certainly you shouldn't be sharing your masks. You shouldn't be sharing clothing. Um, so for the most part, we're going to ask you not to share items. Bring your own. And if you do need to share something, make sure you sanitize it before you pass it over to the next person. And that's true of our electronics. We'll be sanitizing those uh, between uh, times that people use them because we simply need to maintain um, a safe protocol here. In June, we asked people not to use their lockers. Now we are encouraging people to use their lockers to store their personal items. So if you want a locker, please apply for one and we can get you one. Some students and staff members might feel more comfortable wearing a mask all the time. That is, they'll be wearing a mask even when they are two meters away from other people. And if that's the case, we support that. People should do what they need to do to feel safe. So let's not make fun of people who wear masks all the time. Instead, let's support them and let them know, good for you, you're doing what you need to do to feel safe in the school. Make no mistake, just because the year is going to be different does not mean that it can't be a great year. In fact, I think we might have one of our best years ever, but we will need your cooperation.